Today, I'm gonna to talk about how I identify. Stay tuned to hear more. So I've always been very open about it, but I'm adopted and I share that story, you know, with everybody, all my close friends and even my coworkers, they all know um, that I'm adopted. It's part of my reality. I, I bring it up quite a bit, but I just want to talk about something just interesting that's happened in the past couple years. And I wonder if other adoptees are having the same um, issue. And so let me just start by going back and just telling you a little bit about my adoption story. So my mom and dad were married for 10 years and there was just something going on. My mother was just not able to carry a baby to full term. Um, she had some pretty late term miscarriages and she just always wanted to be a mother. And my mother, and when I say the word mother, I'm talking about my adoptive mother, but she is my mother. Um, don't talk to me about my biological mother and call her my real mother because she's not my real mother. My real mother is the woman who raised me and happened to adopt me. But anyway, so she had um, just a couple late term miscarriages and it was just devastating to her and after 10 years you know they just decided that they were going to adopt so um, I was adopted and I was three months old when they got me which is kind of late especially you know when you think I was born in the late 60s most adoptions happened a little bit sooner but I was three months when they got me so people ask me um, you know when did you find out that you were adopted and I never really found out I was adopted I always knew I was adopted they were always very open about it it was you know never when I was 13 that they sat down and told me but I guess when I was very young my mother would work into me being adopted just in my nighttime prayer so I just always knew I was adopted and another thing that I think my parents did that I think was really neat was that they always um, spoke about my birth mother in very positive terms they always said you know she must must have really loved you she wanted you to have you know a, a really good family to be brought up in maybe she couldn't have given you that but they never you know talked about her as just not wanting me or being lazy and not wanting a baby every anything like that so I've always had very positive feelings you know towards my birth mother you know basically a person I don't know so I always think that they um, really did that well so I went through a period when I was younger, like maybe, you know, maybe like in elementary school where I didn't so much um, tell people that I was adopted because I would get questions like, well, did you live in an orphanage? And just kind of get, you know, weird things like that. So there was a time where I didn't really, you know, I guess where I really wanted to be like everybody else. And so I just didn't share that story. But then as it happens in the fifth grade, when I met my, very best friend who's still my best friend today she was also adopted and she had an older brother who was adopted and so it was it was just very nice to just have a, a, a really good friend who is also adopted and what's interesting is she's married a man and he was adopted too but just as I got older I got much more comfortable with you know being adopted and talking openly about it but what happened a couple of years ago that really kind of shook me a little bit was Ancestry.com. And so I grew up in an Italian household. You know, people say, Mary, what are you? I'm Italian. I can make a great lasagna. I can make ravioli from scratch. I mean, including the noodles. I just identify as Italian. I know um, I used to speak Italian quite a bit better than I do now, but I still understand quite a bit of Italian. My Nona, my Italian grandmother, was a very big influence on me. My name is Ver Mary Leonelda, which is very Italian. So, you know, I just identify as Italian. But a couple years ago, my husband and I decided to get the, you know, that spit kit from Ancestry.com and we sent in um, the kit for our DNA results. And I don't really know what I was expecting, but when the kit came back, I was 0% Italian. In fact, I am 90% English. I, I don't have a lot of mix in me, but I'm very um, English. And to be considered a native of a country, you only have to have 60% ethnicity. <laughs> so 
I think I'm totally related to the royal family. And, you know, I think I'm probably like heir to the throne, a couple, you know, maybe seven or eight down there. But that's, an, that's another story. So it was just really weird when I got this and I was English, like, okay. That just, you know, happened. And then people would, after that, you know, again, people like, what are you? And then I was like, well, I'm English but I'm actually adopted, raised Italian, so I really consider myself Italian. And so I was just like, people were just like, okay, like that took five minutes too long, this explanation. But it was weird. I all of a sudden really struggled with, you know, what am I? You know, am I English or am I Italian? And, you know, just kind of having that, that like inner struggle of like, you know, what am I? And I guess ignorance is bliss, just always just feeling like, you know, I'm Italian. And, you know, back in the, the day when I was adopted, all the records were closed. So my parents didn't have really any information about me. You know, people say I looked like my mother. I had her same mannerism. So I just always kind of figured I was Italian and that's just what I was. I was, I was Italian. The whole Ancestry.com, it just really kind of shook me. And so I really, I kind of struggled, I guess. But then another thing happened was that people in the LGBTQI plus community were coming out and just talking about how they identified. Like somebody might have been born male, but they identified as a woman and they would talk about that they were a woman and, and just some people identified as pansexuals. And, and that was really what got me to think about like, you know, it's really about, it's not really about like my DNA or my genetics, it's really about how I identify. And I identify as an Italian girl. Let's face it, everybody loves an Italian girl. So I just really kind of felt at peace all of a sudden. And so I identify as an Italian girl. My DNA might say something different, but I'm an Italian girl. I think my children really identify as half Italian because they had you know, a set of grandparents were Italian and they were, you know, introduced to all those cultures. I mean, in my family growing up, I was shocked, shocked when I was 20 years old and found out that some people have Thanksgiving dinner and they don't serve ravioli. Like, I was like, what? You just have turkey and no ravioli? Well, that's crazy. So that's my story and I hope that you know, if you're struggling with something in your life, you can really, you know, look at yourself and just figure out, you know, how you identify is really what you are. You know, maybe genetics and DNA don't have as much to do with it as we maybe think that they do. And uh, just find peace with how you identify and who you really are. So do you identify perhaps differently than your DNA or genetics say you should? If so, share your story. I'd love to have a discussion about this and hear everybody else's identity story. And again, thanks so much for watching.